Ask your parents or grandparents what the safest cars on the roads are, and they'll probably go back a few decades. An old Kingswood or a Valiant, because they were built really tough. And when I had a crash, it barely left a mark on the car. The other car, on the other hand, well, that's another story. It's an interesting theory, but one that is completely wrong. Sure, those older cars may have looked like they fared well in a minor bingle, but the occupants were probably the opposite. These days, the focus on road safety has swung around to protect those occupants, often at the expense of the car itself. And it all starts with this, the basic body of the car. Now, not only does it have to look good, it also has to be functional and protect you in a crash. Most safety experts say that the body or the structure is the most important safety aspect of any car, more than airbags or fancy electronics. Car makers can spend upwards of a billion dollars getting the basics right here to make sure it does everything it needs to by the time it forms the underpinnings of a number of new models. So how does it work? It's life-saving magic. In general terms, a car is designed to crush and deform in some areas and keep other areas intact. So the front and rear, for example, are known as crumple zones, the sorts of areas designed to absorb the massive amounts of energy in a crash, rather than sending that energy onto the people inside. So the materials and design are all about crumpling in a controlled manner. So whether it's a bonnet or a rail deep inside the engine bay, it's all designed to crumble in a particular way. So every little ripple and crease under the bonnet is there for a reason, and many of them are designed to make it bend at particular points. Then you've got things like the hooks at the back, designed to stop it going back into the windscreen. Then there are structural pieces of metal, and one of their jobs is to concertina inside each other in the event of a crash, absorb all that energy. Even at the side of the car, there's a heck of a lot of thought going into exactly how it's going to crush in a crash. So take the B pillar or this central pillar. Basically, you've got some softer metals down the bottom, harder up the top. It's all designed to act like a pendulum in a crash so that it sends all those crash forces under the occupants as much as possible, protecting the head and torso. If you look at a color-coded breakdown of the different types of metal used in a car, it's a colorful spread. And it's largely about reducing weight and using different types of metals with different properties to perform very specific tasks. But of course, part of that safety plan with engineering the body is ensuring it looks after the people inside. And that's the job of the center of the car, or the safety cell. From roughly here to here, the passenger cell or occupant cell, all that controlled deformation is designed to stop there, minimize intrusion into the cabin. You've only got to look at crash tests from a decade or so ago, compare them to a modern car to see just how far it's come. The more the passenger cell can maintain its shape and divert those crash forces away from the occupants, the better chance you have of walking away from a crash.